Hey everybody, I am Erica Carlson with Bricks Real Estate. Thank you for joining me, whether you found me on a Facebook group or uh, YouTube, I appreciate that you're here. And this information is for you, whether you are thinking about buying a house, uh, selling your house, or you're a homeowner and you're just trying to understand what's going on with the local market, because obviously at any time, you know, our lives can change and maybe something you're not thinking about today could happen tomorrow. So I do hope you find this information helpful. Uh, we're going to start with the showings per week per listing, which is my favorite data. And as you look at the screen, and I can't see myself, so I feel a little blind here, but hopefully you can see this with me in bold, July 19th. We just dropped back a little to 3.2. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, it means that's a very precise number, and I do that on purpose so we can see the slight changes week over week. Because the last three weeks, if we kept it simple, they're all three, right? If you were a homeowner and you said to me, or a home seller, and you said, uh, how many showings per week is average in Wright County? I could say three, and that would be accurate. But as you can see, there's little nuances. When you compare that to Hennepin County, they're more like at five. So the Metro just moves a little bit quicker. They're closer to the airport. They're closer to downtown. We don't find any surprise that Hennepin County will always have a little bit more buyer activity for the most part um, compared to Wright County because we're a little bit further away. Um, absolutely no surprise. So if you had a friend, and I always bring this up, if they were selling their house and um, they said they were getting about five showings a week and you're getting three, you know, absolutely no surprise. That's what the data supports. And I only look at 250 to 500 K. So anything over that, you know, you're starting to get into a different price bracket. Their showing activity is different. And of course, even within that 250 to 500, I could get into the nuances. It's interesting. Some weeks that 500 price point does move a little bit um, more aggressively than the 250. However, if we were going to just speak in generalizations, the lower the price, typically the more showing activity because more people can afford a less expensive home. It's, you know, it's rather common sense, I suppose, but it also depends on what's on the market. If there, we've talked about like really hot lake properties, uh, maybe closer to that 500 price point, you know, has uh, changed our showing activity. So we're not surprised by that. And then when you look below at the days on market, we're still pulling about 44 in Wright County and 24 is the median. So if you were selling a home, I might help you understand this by saying, hey, it might take about a month to sell. Um, something I'm hearing from buyers is they're really looking at that days on market. So as a seller, you want to be cognizant of that too and get your pricing right. Uh, it doesn't seem like it takes that many days and people are like, oh, it's been on the market for a long time. and. You know, I, some of that is a little bit of miseducation of what a long time is. So in your head right now, you could, I would even say more than 44 days is a long time. That's the average. So it shouldn't be spooking you on a house. Um, you, you need to take more into consideration. Again, price point, location, condition. It doesn't mean their basement's full of water um, just because they've hit the 44th day without an offer. Um, there's lots of reasons why a house might have not sold a little bit faster. Bottom line, not everything sells in one weekend and nor should be the expectation for you as a home seller or buyer for that to happen. We are seeing houses that go into multiple offers. We're seeing houses that are sitting a little bit longer. There isn't just one collective story. Everything is individual. Uh, so moving on to this data, which we, we aren't going to spend too much time on, though there is something really interesting popping up here, which is the 558 for active and coming soon properties. Um, notice it's 494 when we take out the contingencies. Uh, so really there's about 500 houses to choose from right now in Wright County and the little green dots represent that. What I find interesting is that it's more than last week, it's more than the week before. In fact, I went all the way back to January and this is the most inventory we've seen in Wright County in a long time. Um, now, I, you know, I take a step back. January, not as many people are thinking about selling a house. So it's, you know, that's not necessarily fair. I'm just saying it's, you know, the seventh month. And if you were out home shopping, Q3 
here you go. I mean, here's your ultimate selection. I went uh, one more step and I grabbed the new construction data as well. And I had to look at my notes there. Uh, we have 312 houses of the 558 or the 494, I should have said, um, without I believe without contingencies that are just new construction. So bottom line, 312 of those houses are new construction. That's that's a lot. You know, if we have 500 houses, that means the likelihood if you're out home shopping that you're going to end up in new construction is very high unless you absolutely don't want it for whatever reason. Um, and then just food for thought, that doesn't really cover all the possibilities, right? A person could do a custom build. They could talk to a builder and pick a, uh, you know, a plot of land and build their own thing. So there is more possibilities outside of the 500. It does come down to if you qualify for that financially. Um, there's a lot of misunderstanding about how to approach new construction. And so I do have a new construction guide I can share with you and loads of information. I will share a small tidbit. Don't start by shopping for land unless, um, no, I don't know what the unless is. Land is typically a cash purchase, which a lot of people who call me on land don't seem to understand that there's very few lenders that will just uh, lend on land alone. That was a lot of L's. Um, so we can connect you with a land loan, land lender. Uh, however, it may be better for you to get a new construction loan and let the builder kind of collect the land purchase with your build and collect it all together in one package. And, and again, not all lenders do new construction loans. So we need to find a local reliable lender if we're going with a true custom build, meaning I'm picking the lot, I'm picking the builder, I'm picking my floor plan, and now I'm picking every little detail inside the house. That would be true custom. And then of course, there's a range in between of your options on that that we can get into. Um, so in my data, just to be very clear, that does include spec houses. Like I said, the 300 that I mentioned are in that list. Those are called spec houses that are already built, um, depending on where you connect with that builder in Sometimes they haven't even dug a hole. Like you'll drive out to the address and it's like, there's nothing here. It hasn't been started. You might be able to share that you want pink walls instead of gray walls or whatever. Um, some builders, that's a hard no. They've already selected everything. That's where the price came from and they're not open to finishing a basement or upgrading X, Y, and Z. A lot of times those selections are made. So that's very builder um, particular, um, there's just a lot of variables in there. So don't rule out new construction because apparently it's, you know, a lot, <laughs> it's a lot of your options on this list. All right, moving down to pending 352. Okay, that's up over the last couple of weeks. Nothing super significant about that data because of course, the people who purchased back in late May, um, June, they're starting to close on their properties. We expect that number to go up. Closing's going down to 207. Okay. It's interesting, it's not that significant. And then because I've been babbling for a little bit, I'm just gonna keep this simple. We're in a seller's market. Um, we're not in the same type of seller's market in the sense of the last two years, right? So if you're thinking about a neighbor that sold last year, um, probably not at this time, but spring market or the year before, and you're thinking about that in terms of your house sale, just be careful like what you're using to compare. I have a market report you can download so you can get really accurate information. Of course, a real estate agent of your choice will help you dig deeper to make sure you're getting very current information. Um, even comparing what happened in the spring pre-Memorial Day weekend, if you were thinking about selling now, it's not necessarily apples to apples. So. Uh, just be careful what data you're looking at to figure out your price. Um, same with um, buyers. You know, we last weekend we got somebody uh, under contract in Plymouth for well below asking price, um, and then another person, you know, in a similar area, you know, went very competitive with an appraisal gap and. Um, you know, different inspection ways we can write that language to make it more uh, appealing to the seller. I have a whole playbook on how to write aggressive offers. And, and, you know, if you choose to work with me as your buyer's agent, I will definitely give you all the tips and tricks to help you write a great offer. Now, not one that you're going to regret. We're always going to talk about finding that middle ground. I won the house, but not to the point that if I 
found out tomorrow it was mine. I like feel sick to my stomach because I feel like I overpaid. Um, so we can definitely talk about that. So again, my name's Erica. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you. My website is there, iheartminneapolishomes.com. I'd love for you to visit me, start your home search and uh, find out how I can help you. Have a great Wednesday. Thank you again.